I lit the fire with charcoal because it's easier to start and it's easy to make charcoal. So once the charcoal was uh, burning well, then I added coal, which is very difficult, very difficult to light. I'm using bitum bituminous coal, soft coal. Charcoal is easy to light and easy to start. That's why I start off with it. Blacksmith used to use charcoal before they started shipping in coal. But it took about four times as much by volume. About four times as much charcoal. But do you have is that have air sucking into your chimney or is that doing it by itself? No, it's, it's the excellent design of the chimney or forge that's creating the draft. Wow. So that's just a natural draft it's from, a natural from the heat. Draft, oh, that is amazing. But it works so well and suck the tools up your chimney if you're not careful. <laughs> you can, well, that's incredible. Not. Yes. That's 3,000 degrees right there. So you start with like bar stock. I guess that, is that what you call that? It's, bar it's, stock or something it's, like it's that? It's bar stock, but it's or. mild steel. It's not tempered or doesn't have a volume of molybdenum uh, or any of those mm. ingredients. Nickel. Just low carbon steel. Well, I just saw some fine sparks coming off of there, which indicates my steel is starting to melt, so that's 3,000 degrees. Um, the sparks? Yeah, I don't see them now. It could have been an impurity in the coal. Yeah. Like when I make my charcoal, there might be nails in the wood. I usually don't care until they get in there and start sparking. I think it's my piece burning up, and it's, and it's yeah. a, something less important. So Good. blacksmiths from like forever pretty much would have, they would purchase stock like that, right? A lot of them, you know, that's, the different that's ground correct. bars or whatever. Do you have any pieces of pig iron? I don't know. If, if, if you don't and you'd like one, I'll give you one. Because I have a lot of it that I find. Well, I appreciate that. Yeah, I, I should have brought one up. Yeah. Chastity belt, really? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's just locked up now. It's got it used a to. walk on it. Is that something you made or? That's something I made 35 <laughs> years ago. Wow. <laughs> I passed that on to my daughter when she, before she got married, she was dating. You heat this till it's like cherry red, typically? Cherry red's probably a good description. Mm -hmm. The color, the color and the reason the windows are covered up is because color is in critical when you're a blacksmith. Oh really? Depending on what you're making, like a huh. edge of a straight razor has to be very hard steel, but it would be a, a poor quality for an axe because of the brittleness, you know. So it, that, that tempering process depends on the color. It's the only way to gauge, the only way to gauge the temperature of the metal was by color. Yeah. I used to have a chart, and it's probably up in the museum now, of colors to look for, depending on what tool you're making. When they produced the wrought iron, the only way to get the impurities out of it was to continually heat it and run it through a big set of rollers and squeeze out all the all the glass and melted sand and other impurities. That's just wrought all the iron <laughs> is iron melted right out of the ore right out of the iron ore with no ingredients added. Carbon steel is taking that wrought iron in fairly flat sheets, putting it in an oven, and putting powdered charcoal between each layer and baking it for about a week. And the pores open up and absorb the carbon and the charcoal. And you have all of a sudden a real hard steel metal instead of a soft, pliable, easy to bend metal like rock. Oh, okay. There might be a few sparks falling in there.
That's an elementary hook. That's awesome. All right, this is my first attempt ever blacksmithing, so don't laugh at me. Um, You need a finer point. A oh, finer point. Next, next time you heat it, uh, I'm gonna heat it up a little bit more. Yeah. So I want to straighten this up a bit right here. Yeah, right? clean it, clean it up a little bit. Put a curl on that tip before it cools down. How do I do that? It's a hard to turn out. Just like a little... Just like it's supposed to. Uh, perfect. <laughs> hey, that's my first attempt. That's cool. Here's a project. It's relatively simple. Find these old forks at an auction with broken handle or with no handle. And they're made out of excellent steel. You couldn't make a fork like this out of wrought iron. You need, need a high quality steel. You can hear, you hear the metal yeah. ring. And then this is a three, three times strong fork, but I bend the hooks like we've been making on the anvil here. Wow. And the hardest part is pounding out this shaft so that it can be hung on a wall. Make and you glass. actually sell those? I sell these. I paint them black and sell them in my antique malls. I used to sell them in my blacksmith craft shows. It needs to be hot punched, you hunt. Mm. Grab that. Bar with it, right there. Grab the bar, the bar as well. The piece it was in. I need to put this piece on my anvil and punch this oh. hot because I can't draw it. So that's the most difficult. The, the problem is I need three hands. Now, is this a, would, this, would this be a traditional piece a blacksmith would have, say, 200 years ago? Something like that? Sure, there were all kinds of nail headers and tools that look the same with with holes like this and you might create a shoulder on a bolt or a nail or punch a hole but that's what these holes are for this hole is for an anvil it's called a pritchel hole i don't know where the name came from but it's you lay your piece on that hole and then punch it and punch through problem how about is, the square one problem is this would uh mushroom down in you need a smaller, oh. smaller hole. Called a hardy hole? It's called a hardy hole. There are different sizes for different animals. And these are all tools and that you use? tools for various uses. Oh, nice. Huh. This is a fuller of some sort. It's hard to tell what the blacksmith might have made with this. But there's a general rule of thumb in blacksmithing. If you're making three or more of an item pretty much identical, make a tool to help yourself. These are different tools that I used over I the holes. They're called hardy. Is that what's that used for? It's probably texturing, make you know oh. something you would grip. That'd be decorative. This is your axe collection, and I love axes. Yeah, I didn't know that. All those different cool. kinds. And you see, this is a how they they would kill cattle with this kind. Yes, and, and then hit, it, hit them uh, with that. They use the blade to cut the hoofs off and really get started. Oh, wow! Get the process butchering process started. Fascinating. These travelers are known as blacksmith tools for measuring metal. Oh, They're really? also used in the logging industry for. How did it work? Do you know? Oh, you, you just made a chalk marker. In this case, there's a little notch. Made a chalk marker to your log or started at the very end. Rolled that right along the log. So many turns you want to. That spins. Right. Okay. And hey, what would you use that, those kind of... Hewing beams. I have a beam okay. down there, but it's kind of hard to see. Yeah, okay. That it's hewing. That's the kind of tool you'd use for that, to flatten it out? For hewing, hewing yeah. logs right. to make uh, beams. Looks like an ice skate. That does. It looks like an ice skate. <laughs> this is the last piece to complete my collection of axes. I thought I'd never find one. What is it? It's called a soddy axe. A soddy being a house made out of sod in the plains. Oh, wow. And after they stacked the sod, they trimmed the walls, trimmed the sod off, trimmed the walls off. Soddy axe. This is a oh. this is a small example of 
Yeah, the handles are actually like sideways on those. Yeah, so generally, so like you this. don't uh, hit your knuckles on them mm. continually on the edge oh, of the okay. log. I just want to thank you for uh, showing us around today. Oh, I mean, it was really cool, just, wasn't it? It's my pleasure. It was awesome, yeah. <laughs> my pleasure. I mean, you're a man of many talents. Yeah, thank you. And I wish I had a quarter, <laughs> quarter of the knowledge that you have, thank different you things kindly. you do. Yeah, Good time, it. huh? Yeah. I appreciate that. I'm back here. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you on the next one. And I'll rock you until I go to sleep. She'll shake the coins from your pocket, take your gold chain and your locket. Mother Earth has no sympathy. She'll take the ring from your hand and bury it in the sand and keep it for eternity. Mother Earth, she's got her secrets she's promised to keep hidden in her dirt or deep in her creek. Mother Earth, she ain't saying exactly what she's saving, where it is or what it might be. Mother Earth, you are my lady, my dear.